Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. Good for a Monday morning. Uh, my name is Jason Perkins Cohen. I'm the director of the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. I want to thank you for being here and part of our celebration of the Employment Connection Center. We've got lots of great stuff to tell you, but before we get to that, I do want to uh, ask your uh, permission to divert just a little bit. Many of you know that uh, we had a very dear colleague uh, who passed away, who worked here at the Employment Connection Center. Uh, Dan Baldwin passed away on September 7th, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, Dan was uh, a tremendous person, a uh, tremendous worker. Uh, when we opened this center last year, <clears throat> we had an event actually in the hallway and of course people had talking points, but while Dan's name wasn't written to any, anyone's talking points, his name came up over and over again, which really speaks to how important Dan was to the community. So uh, I want to ask your permission, if you wouldn't mind, let's just have a brief moment of silence in honor of Dan and all that he meant. Great, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, my job is really, I just want to make two quick points before we pass it on to other folks. Uh, the first point is, you know, it's fall, today feels like the first day of fall. I know it's not really the first day of fall, but it feels like it outside. Baseball is coming to the playoffs for Baltimore, hopefully. There's that movie, Field of Dreams, whether you saw the movie or you didn't see the movie. You remember that one line, uh, if you build it, they will come. Uh, that's not really true. <laughs> Um, and it really speaks to uh, what you do have to do to make folks come and make a center successful. You, know, you, you can't just put a name, you can't just have a building and put your name out and residents and employers start coming. What you really need to, need to do to make it work is you need to have great partners. And we are so fortunate. We have wonderful staff, Davi and her team here. We've got, yes. Uh, we've got wonderful uh, employers, we've got community representatives, and it's really everyone working together to really embed uh, a center in a community where people come uh, and they get services and they benefit. And that's really what today is all about, is celebrating all of that success. Uh, the second point I wanted to make, and one of our partners, by the way, where's Glenn? There he is, Glenn. Uh, thank you so much for asking me and all that you do. Uh, we're having conversations with Glenn about perhaps expanding our site here, and those conversations are all going. You are a tremendous partner in and of yourself. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, the second point is that it's Workforce Development Month, uh, and if you're the in the in the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, uh, Workforce Development Month is like Christmas, uh, and the real significance of that is. Uh, again, so much of what happens in this center is the significance of what we have to do as a city, uh, as a center, as an agency, and as a city to help make sure that we're doing two things. We're helping to make sure that every resident has a, uh, a job opportunity that leads to a, a living wage. And for our employers, we have to make sure that they can find the workforce that they need. So uh, it doesn't end in the month of September. We want to acknowledge that uh, while we're here. And much of what we do is under the leadership of our mayor, who I'm now going to introduce, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. And I share uh, your uh, sense of loss uh, with uh, Dan's untimely and unexpected passing. I know that everyone has taken it um, pretty hard and, and the only silver lining I ever see when you lose someone that's so valuable is we were so blessed uh, to have had the opportunity to um, to work with them. So thank you again and all the team here for your all of your good work in uh, in a very difficult time. I want to thank uh, Major Worley for um, being here as well. Thank you. And Glenn Middleton and the leadership of AFSME, thank you for being such great partners. So, we are here today to acknowledge the achievements of the Employment Connection Center, or ECC. Excuse me. I'll just, I'll let you know in advance, I'm struggling with a cold, so if I sound a little bit more like a man than normal, it is because of that. And if I'm, you know, <coughs> excuse me, still coughing, you'll forgive me. And whoever's using the mic next, just stand back. So, of course, the ECC ex exists because of the local impact grant dollars generated by the Horseshoe Casino of Baltimore as the center. We can clap for the Horseshoe. 
clapping increases your odds. <laughs> As the center is fully paid for with those funds. I'm pleased, I was pleased to be on hand as the Horseshoe celebrated its two-year anniversary uh, last month, and I was excited to be there with um, some of the employees who have been there since day one. And the pride that they had was just amazing. And Aaron, you should be very proud. And I can proudly say that Horseshoe has delivered on its promise to be a vibrant entertainment destination and a great workforce uh, partner for Baltimore. Horseshoe employs more than 1,800 workers, and nearly 60% of these employees are Baltimore City residents. Yeah. Beyond the direct contributions by Horseshoes, um, the investments we're making with the local impact grant funds in South Baltimore are creating real opportunities and improving the quality of life for Baltimore's residents. And the Employment Connection Center is a shining example of this. The ECC team members give residents the chance to be a part of the growth that we're seeing in South Baltimore and throughout the city. And I want to acknowledge the efforts of the Local Development Council, the LDC, who from the beginning determined that workforce development must be a top priority for how we spend the local impact grant funds. I also want to congratulate uh, Jason and the Mayor's Office of Employment Development for um, for proposing this initiative model when the community asked us to connect residents with jobs. So another decision that was made quite deliberately was to locate the center here in the Carroll Camden industrial area. And we're fortunate to find, as I said before, a great partner, uh, a friend, and a kind landlord uh, in AFSME. So thank you again, Glenn, and the entire leadership of AFSME. Uh, and Wayne Vance and the Carroll Camden Business Association. I want to thank them for making the ECC program uh, staff feel very welcome here. Not only is this location central to South Baltimore's neighborhoods, but it's also a location that is surrounded by employers. In this way, we're building collaborations with some of the best Baltimore-based businesses right here in Carroll Camden. These are names like Elliot Dredges and Len the Plumber and uh, Hill Gartner Stone and uh, STX who are all uh, represented here today. Where are our reps from all of those? Raise your hand. Thank you very much. So in order to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families, we know that we have to attract new residents. Yet we also have to give those residents who are here more reasons to be hopeful and more opportunities to thrive and to prosper. That means creating job opportunities for all of Baltimore's residents, and that's what the ECC has set out to do, and that's what they have shown to be successful uh, in their endeavors. In just 17 months, the ECC has enrolled more than 1,200 customers in career case management. And this other number is the one I really love, placed nearly 300 residents in full-time jobs. It's performed, yeah. And they stay active. They perform nearly 1,800 specific job readiness activities and serve job seekers, making more than 4,000 visits through these doors. And the training center, the, the ECC, the, ECC also works with employers to create training programs to meet their specific skill requirements. And that's something that not everyone uh, knows that the Mayor's Office of Employment Development does. And that's this tra the training component. I tell uh, employers all the time when I talk to them, you should consider the Mayor's Office of Employment Development your back office. We want to be everything that you need to make you successful, if it's training, if it's screening employees, if it's um, you know making referrals, all of those things, we want to be your concierge for um, for everything you need to be a successful business. And I can say that with confidence uh, because of the excellent team that we have at the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. I want to thank you again for all of your work. And, and another thing, not just the professionalism, what you do, but the fact that you're not just sitting around doing what we've done before, uh, that the Mayor's Office of Employment Development is all about looking forward and figuring out how we can best position our residents for the opportunities of the uh, new economy. 
So it takes uh, many great partners, some of whom uh, you will hear from shortly, uh, to operate this center. So I want to, again, a special thanks to Aaron and the Horseshoe Casino and the whole Horseshoe team that's here and the many businesses who have partnered with ECC uh, to hire locally. And that includes Second Chance. I see a representative here from Second Chance that I recognize. And thank Amazon, Barco Enterprises, K and K Adams, and so many more who are here with us today and who have been a, who've been great partners. And before I introduce Aaron Chamberlain, the general manager of the Horseshoe Casino Baltimore, I want to briefly mention some of our other investments that we're making with the local impact impact grant dollars. And I I try to say these uh, things as many times as possible because everyone sees the horseshoe. You can't uh, be downtown. You can't go in and out of town without seeing it. But everyone doesn't see. Uh, where we're spending these local dollars. And you know what happens when, um, you know, you have the, the naysayers that want to say that, uh, you know, that we have the casino but the community is not benefiting. I say all the time, we, we absolutely are. And I can, you know, show you point by point and place by place where the community is benefiting. So I feel compelled as many times as possible to talk about all of the ways in which, and, and, and again, I started talking about the main thing, which is a job creation, but there's so many other ways Horseshoe has had a positive impact. Um, we've implemented a complete streets plan with pedestrian and bike safety measures and beautification projects throughout the um, impact area. We've enrolled nearly 300 preschoolers in summer Head Start programs. We provided 481 uh, summer jobs uh, for young people ages 14 to 21 through Youth Works. We've spent, a, uh, there's been spending of a million dollars on upgrades to parks and green projects throughout South Baltimore and expanded the city's broadband fiber in neighborhoods to connect libraries and rec centers and to expand the city's public, safety's communi public safety communications network. So again, that's just, that's just a part of the list of the things uh, that have come out of the impact funds from the casino. So it's very clear that the Horseshoe Casino has had a positive impact on Baltimore's uh, quality of life and our local economy. And we're leveraging these funds to support collaboration with experienced partners such as the Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation, Reading Partners, UMBC, Northrop Grum Grumman Foundation, Under Armour, and the Heart of America Foundation. These efforts are leading to educational programs and capital improvements in schools and rec centers, which include a new state-of-the-art library at the George Washington Elementary in Pigtown, a new STEAM, yeah, we can clap for that. I'm glad you're in here, Glenn. You got, you're, you're like my own hype man. I appreciate it. The new STEAM program, which is STEM um, plus art, right? Uh, at the at Lakeland Elementary and Middle School, and a beautiful, beautiful new makeover uh, that that um, you know it was it was an amazing makeover. If you if you see the before and after at Westport Academy, you can't help but get emotional about it because you know the impact that that has on those young people's uh, lives and their families. And when we send children into learning environments, it really speak to how we value them and education. So. A lot of great things are happening. So through many factors, uh, this is an exciting time uh, for South Baltimore with new destinations like our casino and the forthcoming improvements to the middle branch, new businesses, new housing developments on the way. It's undeniable uh, that we're making good progress and we have a very bright future. Um, yet by strategically target, targeting the local impact, impact grant fund dollars, we're ensuring that the local communities and longtime residents of South Baltimore share in the prosperity that uh, is uh, very evident here. So I know I've mentioned her name several times and the, the name of uh, her casino many times. And now I am very, very pleased to introduce Aaron Chamberlain, the general manager of Horseshoe, who would, and, and I again want to thank uh, Horseshoe for being our latest. And I think I might have forgotten, and uh, my deputy mayor Colin is back there. I think you admonished me for forgetting to, yes, you did. Um, <laughs> for forgetting to mention the last time that you were our latest live near your work partner, which means they are matching down payment dollars. Uh, the city puts up a certain amount, the employer puts up a certain amount, and encourages people who work at the Horseshoe to live in Baltimore. And for that, um, 
I am grateful and our tax our, our tax base is very grateful. Uh, so please welcome Aaron Chamberlain. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for a, a beautiful introduction. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today on behalf of the Horseshoe Casino um, to recognize the significant contributions that the Employment Connection Center has made, not just for our workforce, but for all of Baltimore City's workforce. This is a, a really great example of partnerships. I think we do things better when we all work together, right? So working with the Mayor's Office of Economic Development, the LDC, many community and city leaders, the Horseshoe Baltimore, uh, through our local impact grants, is very pleased to see what the ECC has been able to accomplish in a very short amount of time. To date, more than $900,000 has been budgeted to this center. We're getting close to a million. I know we can do it. Um, and this center provides great um, training that is so important, job training, preparation skills, um, that is very important for employers such as the Horseshoe Baltimore, but also other employers around the entire city um, as they're looking at new candidates. And, you know, as, as the mayor indicated, from the earliest planning stages here, the Horseshoe Baltimore was always meant to help fuel economic growth. Um, but it was also intended to help support local programs such as these and, and the many others that she mentioned that we're very pleased to, to have supported through our local impact grants. We take pride in having accomplished both of these goals in just two years. So, you know, I'll go off a little bit off a of script here and say that um, as the mayor mentioned, we're so proud. I mean, one thing that we really, we really strive to do is employ locally and um, now also get folks to live here locally. And I can say, you know, I, I see a lot of my team in, in the back there too who have been here since day one. We're so proud that 60% of our workforce comes from Baltimore City. It really makes a difference for us. Um, we are Baltimore City's casino, um, and we like to, to think that, you know, by employing Baltimore City's residents, too, that we're really honoring that pledge. And, you know, it's, it's a, what we would like, you know, uh, call a win-win. I think we feel very proud um, to be able to do that, but I think also our, our employees feel very proud to be able to work in a beautiful facility, um, have access to job training such as this through, and then also not just provide for them themselves and their families, but by supporting the Horseshoe and, and really, um, you know, bringing more um, money into the community. We're also, they're able to help their fellow neighbors too, right, through continuing these local impact grants. So, you know, I think it's been very meaningful for a lot of our team members too to continue to live and work in this area. So um, we thank everyone who's partnered with us to make that happen. And, you know, it's, you know, as the casino, we, we certainly provide a good amount of training, right? We provide a... a, a <coughs> significant amount. Not a lot of people uh, know the casino business from day one, but there's a lot of basic um, employee needs and training needs that the ECC provides. Um, again, not just serving Horseshoe Baltimore, but serving the entire community. For that, we thank them. So, you know, this is helping our area businesses and not just the job seekers. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to say we're really putting together something that's beneficial to both the business community as well as to the local community. Um, I, I uh, say thank you to the ECC for all their great efforts. I say thank you to the LDC for really thinking about making this program and putting it together um, and for everyone who runs it. So congratulations to everyone. And uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you and hiring more folks who have been trained here from the ECC. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Wayne Vance, who is the president of the Carol Camden Business Association. Wayne. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Aaron, for that introduction. I very much appreciate it. Madam Mayor, fellow members of the Baltimore Local Development Council, representatives of the Employment Connection Center, and other distinguished guests, on behalf of the uh, over 200 businesses uh, located in Carroll Camden, it is my distinct honor to welcome you back to Carroll Camden. It's been a little over a year since the ribbon cutting ceremony marking the grand opening of the Employment Connection Center. In that year, Carol Camden has continued to literally blossom. Using local impact grant funds provided by revenues generated uh, by Horseshoe Baltimore, 
we successfully completed a wonderful tree canopy project. Taking advantage of local impact supplemental sanitation funding, area businesses have partnered with DPW by successfully participating in the mayor's semi-annual cleanup day, adding waste cans, periodic street sweeping, and joining the DPW block, uh, adopt a block program. Finally, the opening of the Employment Connection Center, also supported with local impact funding, has provided area businesses with access to a pool of valuable human resources that they may not have previously been able to connect with. The Employment Connection Center has been able to create a win-win by not only successfully matching job seeker skills with employer needs, but to help provide those skills necessary to compete and win in today's job market. While we take a moment to recognize some of our successes over the past year, we must also recognize that we cannot stop there. We can and must do more to continue attracting new businesses and more importantly, new jobs to Carol Camden. You know, I stood up here a year ago and I spoke about the opportunity each uh, of us has every single day to do something incremental to succeed and help your team win. With that context in mind, I want to read part of my remarks from one year ago. I looked out of our office window on several occasions over the last two months and have seen Dan Baldwin pounding the streets of Carroll Camden. 90 degrees, suit coat and tie. Dan's trying to get out there and make as many business contacts as possible, working hard every day to help his team win. I know that everyone working in the center will continue to honor Dan's memory by working hard every day to do something incremental to make a difference in someone's life and to continue to connect Baltimore City residents and Carroll Camden businesses. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the president of Hillgartner Natural Stone Company, Mr. Tom Doyle. Thank you very much. Um, Hillgartner has been in Baltimore for quite a few years. We started back in the Civil War. Um, and they asked me when the mayor's office contacted me to say, could I say a few things about uh, the Office of Employment Development? The, my exposure there was almost strictly Dan Baldwin, but that's really all the center needed. Uh, Dan came to us. We were a uh, victim is the wrong term. We, we were relocated by some of the South Baltimore development. We were over on Cross Street, and, uh, and we moved. It was the BDC uh, went to extreme efforts to, to find us a location. The city stepped forward and fixed uh, the road to that location, and then we needed people as was mentioned earlier here today, that you can't just build a factory and put your name on the top of it and expect uh, people to come. Uh, I have been doing this for 30 years and was completely unaware of the efforts that the city had put forward. And uh, my understanding is that the vast majority of job growth occurs in small business but we are the least equipped to do it. The guy who runs the marble shop, the guy out in the shop, he's busy making marble dust. My field superintendent, he's busy getting it installed. Uh, I'm busy trying to sell it. Nobody is there to vet, interview, do all of the things necessary to get the quality employees that you need to be an effective organization. And I cannot say enough about the efforts that Dan Baldwin put forward. Everything from, <laughs> everything from spending hours with my shop foreman, with myself, to get a feel for the environment that we had there, to the, the interviewing of the, of the individuals. He came to me and he said, well, he'll pull together a few people for me to come talk to. And I came down to this office and there were 30 people sitting there. <laughs> in coats and ties interviewing for an apprentice job. Uh, after I spoke to the group, he said, uh, I had committed to speaking with everybody who was interested after hearing the job description. 
uh, to speak with each of them individually, and I didn't know I had committed four hours. Uh, there was 18 people came in to sit down with me personally to interview for an apprenticeship opening. Uh, that is a, a benefit to a small employer to, to get the, the, the vetting done to, to know about the people. Dan's effort didn't stop there. He would drive them to work during the first week just to be sure they could make it until they got their first paycheck. A truly an incredible man. I'm looking forward to meeting the person who's going to be trying to fill his shoes. But uh, I can say as, as a long-standing Baltimore employer, uh, this concept, and I, and I have to thank Horseshoe for their funding uh, of this, but this concept uh, is, is gee, why didn't we think of it a long time ago, or why was I so stupid as to not seek it out and find it 30 years ago when I first got here? But uh, thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to the expansion of the uh, center here in the future. Uh, back for more. Uh, round two. Um, so it's great to hear all of these, uh, and you really get a sense of the stew that it takes to make uh, the center work, um, working with folks like Horseshoe, the Business Association, employers, uh, and, and, and what an impact it can make on people's lives. Um, the one ingredient we're missing from the stew is actually the, uh, the community, a resident who's benefited. And we, of course, one of the happy challenges that we have is that uh, our successes are, are working, so they can't always come to uh, press conferences like this. But I do have remarks from a resident who wanted to be here, um, and he, uh, I'm going to read, if you don't mind, uh, just briefly his remarks about uh, his experience um, here. So his name is uh, Darnell Worrell, uh, and these are his words. In July 2015, I was suddenly unemployed after being laid off from my job. I'd heard about the new Employment Connection Center in my neighborhood and decided to walk over and see if they could help me. I immediately began working with the center manager, Davi Peterson, and she helped me create a new customized resume. Uh, Davi was someone I could talk with to help overcome some of my life challenges. She cared about me as a person and wanted to see me succeed in life. She also managed my job search and helped me qualify and enrolled in the Jumpstart Pre-Apprenticeship Construction Training Program. Yeah. I also worked with the center's business services representative, Dan Baldwin, and he connected me with employment at Camden Yards, where I was able to work during the day and finish my construction training in the evening. Uh, the construction training was funded by the Casino Impact Grant, so it's exactly what the mayor was talking about, how it's not just isolated uh, parts. I learned construction, safety, carpentry, electrical, and plumbing skills. I graduated in April 2016, and I got a job with Stella May Contracting, working on different utility construction projects in Baltimore City. In addition to my uh, construction job, I'm still working at Camden Yards. I'm glad I visited the Employment Connection Center because they helped me uh, get back on my feet and find a new career, career path. Since that time, since April, I've since purchased a vehicle, and I'm working to buy a home. So again, uh, that really speaks to uh, when you think about if you build it, they will come, what can really happen when we work together. So uh, with that, I want to wrap things up. If Davi, if we want, wouldn't mind just raising your hand for a second. Thank you for all that you do. Um, as we conclude today, uh, Davi will take folks back to the actual center office, which is next door. You don't have to go outside uh, and show folks uh, where the magic happens. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Inside of the computer literacy lab, people come in, they register, and they look for employment. But while they're here, they can also look into their computer skills. So these computer skills that we teach, we teach Word, Excel, PowerPoint. We give them computer skills so they know how to empower themselves and continue their search with these skills that they're gaining in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, computer fundamentals, computer file management and emailing.